for robust debate. These shows are known for Democrats talking to Democrats about how soon they can put Trump in jail. Graham says one thing is abundantly clear about the left. These people hate Trump so much and Trump voters that they just can't stand a dissenting point of view. And these are from people who all pronounce themselves, you know, the guardians of democracy. And Graham doubts that McDaniel would have been a cheerleader for the former president anyway. I think when you're getting paid $300,000 a year to be on NBC, you're not going to be super pro-Trump. The investigation continues into the bridge collapse in Baltimore. Jim Nails, a Navy veteran, appeared on Jenna Ellis in the morning. If they had time to issue a May Day with enough advance notice for them to shut down that bridge, there's no reason why they weren't able to drop both the anchors on that ship. There have been conflicting reports saying that they dropped one anchor, which doesn't make any sense. You would think you would, you would drop both of them. So this needs to be the primary focus of the investigation is – Why did this not happen? Were they undermanned? Did they not have the proper staffing? Or did people just forget their training? He said a report claims it may have been dirty fuel that caused the shutdown of the power to the ship. I have a hard time with that because, again, it either points to potential incompetence or just a lack of following protocol. When a ship brings on fuel, it's supposed to do a minimum of two tests for the fuel. One is you just check it to be what's called clear and bright to make sure that there are no particulate matter in, in the fuel. The other thing that you do is an API gravity test to make sure that the chemical makeup of the fuel meets the requirements of the ship. If they had done that, you would not have accepted dirty fuel onto the ship. He went on to say that from evidence thus far, it appears this incident was caused by incompetence and possibly due to the wrong company focus. Deadly violence rocks New York City this week. The tragic shooting of an NYPD officer comes the same day a man was shoved into an oncoming train in an unprovoked attack. Yet Mayor Eric Adams says crime is under control. Here's Fox's Brian Yenis. An NYPD officer and a subway rider killed in separate incidents, followed by an assault on an NYPD officer at a subway station. Yet Mayor Eric Adams says regardless of how unsafe people may feel, jobs are up and crime is down. I know a city out of control because I visit some of them in this country. This is not one of them. Our focus must be this. Recidivism, severe mental health illness, random acts of violence. That is the mission. Adams said he can't do it alone. He needs state lawmakers to focus on going after repeat offenders because the system is overwhelmed and people don't respect the police. Police officer Jonathan Diller was shot and killed during a traffic stop on Monday. The head of the largest retirement fund in the U.S. says the inability to retire comfortably is one of the biggest global economic challenges of the century. Here's Fox Business's Jerry Willis. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, says the idea of retirement at 65, once commonplace, is now, well, a bit crazy. Fink placed the blame on the nation's defined contribution system, which requires average Americans to set aside money for their golden years. Social Security, an option for many Americans, is set to run out of reserves in just 10 years. BlackRock, which manages $10 trillion in retirement savings, is launching a product called Life Path Paycheck, which Fink says will help fill the gap, making your 401k feel more like, well, a pension. I'm Robert Thornton. The Middle East, that's one part of the world we need to pay attention to, especially the country of Israel. Each week, I'll help you make sense of what's happening in that region through a biblical lens. I'll bring you important information about security threats, archaeological discoveries, biblical prophecy, ministries happening on the ground, and much more. I'm John Riley. Join me for the Middle East Report Special Edition every Saturday at 6.30 p.m. Central on American Family Radio as I connect you to the people, places, and geography of what we read in God's Word. Darkness is not an affirmative force. It simply reoccupies the space vacated by the light. This is the Hamilton Corner on American Family Radio. It should be uncomfortable for a believer to live as a hypocrite. Delivering people out of the bondage of mainstream media. And the philosophies of this world. God has called you and me to be his ambassadors. Even in this dark moment. Let's not miss our moment. And now. The Hamilton Corner. Well, good evening, one and all. Alex McFarland here. This is the Hamilton Corner. I've got a great privilege to be sitting in tonight for Pastor, Attorney, Cultural Commentator Abe Hamilton III. 
And it's a great privilege. Uh, Bobby Rosa on the board and Jeff McIntosh helping engineer the show. We've got a great program tonight and a guest that I want you to meet because we have an important announcement about uh, a resource that's rolling out to help people get into the Word of God. But uh, it is Holy Week around the world. Uh, People are observing the fact that nearly 2,000 years ago, uh, I would say it is the most significant week in world history that Jesus Christ, the one validated, proven to be the Son of God, he was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, fulfilled all the prophecies, made the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk. He raised Lazarus from the dead. And then Jesus Christ, shown to be the Messiah by compelling lines of evidence, will celebrate this week that he laid his back to a beam of wood. And the wrath of God for the sin of humanity, the the punishment we all deserved for my sin, for everyone's, Jesus paid the price on Calvary's cross. And Sunday, I hope you'll be in church this Sunday as Christians the world over celebrate something that no other belief system can say, that our Savior rose from the dead. Jesus conquered the grave, and what good news. He said if we believe in him, then we too will rise from the dead and we'll have everlasting life. Well, this is Alex McFarland. I welcome you to the program. We have a great show today on this Holy Week. Um, the, the Word of God, the Bible, I'm passionate about it. If you recognize my voice, it's probably from a show called Exploring the Word. And for 15 years now, Bert Harper and I have been on the American Family Radio Network teaching the Word of God and how exciting that honor is. Well, someone who shares our passion for getting people into the Scriptures is Steve Cleary of iBible. Now, he's been a part of a lot of great projects, Pilgrim's Progress being dramatized, and he's got several other things that we want to talk about. But do you know, uh, listeners to the American Family Radio Network and people that are a part of the American Family Association, you will know one of the big projects that he was uh, leading, and that was the animation series for children of Ryan DeFratis. Just awesome. And he uh, he and I met uh, on another show, and I just was so uh, taken with all that God is doing through this man's life. I wanted to have him on AFR. So without further ado, Steve Cleary of iBible and Revelation Media, we thank you. We welcome you to the program. And uh, you're on the Hamilton Corner with us, Steve. Thanks, Alex. It's it's always an honor to be on uh, an AFR show in with my friends at American Family Association. I just uh, absolutely love the ministry. Well, uh, thank you. And I know I speak on behalf of many people when we say we're grateful for all that you're doing. You know, I want, I want to hear about this rollout of some of the Bible that's been dramatized. But first of all, tell us about y- your own journey and Revelation Media. Um, I launched Revelation Media as actually unique in that uh, I had done some work in media, like you said, worked on Ryan DeFratis, and we had uh, then, I was producing the film The Pilgrim's Progress, and the original thought was, you know, we make a film, we bring it, we sell it to a distributor, you know, maybe people make a little bit of money, and we really had this kind of thought as a commercial, a commercial project, and then the more we learned and the more I prayed, I realized that it was much more important for a film like The Pilgrim's Progress to be available for the world and to be available for the mission field. And so we, I prayed about it, and my wife, and we put out a fleece. And it was, it was kind of a crazy fleece. I mean, some people I told it about, they, they kind of laughed at me. And I said, mm-hmm. God, if you do this, I will start a ministry, Revelation Media, and I will put Pilgrim's Progress into a nonprofit and we will distribute it to the world. And that fleece came about uh, at the exact time that I prayed about it. And so I said, okay, uh, I didn't I didn't want to start a nonprofit at the time. Um, I had a speech impediment. I didn't want to lead a nonprofit. I didn't want to speak publicly. But God was just calling, calling us to do more for the mission field, uh, media for the mission field. 
And so we did, and we put Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, we translate it now into 30 languages. It's been seen by over 30 million people. Wow. And we just saw the power of doing media that could translate around the world. It's just, it's just an amazing thing. The world is starving for content like this. Yes. Wow. Uh, well, may God bless you and your obedience. That's great. I remember when the Pilgrim's Progress Project came out, and that was just so impressive. And, um, you know, when you and I were talking yesterday, you were talking about how people are hungry, and there are so many unreached language groups. And, uh, you know, folks, let me encourage you as we're getting ready to celebrate Easter, read uh, Matthew 24 and 25 that's called the Olivet Discourse. And, Steve, Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. So um, one thing that we, the church, we're, we're to be committed to, as the Lord was, that the message of salvation go to all people groups. How many, um, as far as you're aware, Steve, how many language groups do not have God's Word today? Do you know? Yeah, I mean, it depends on, so first of all, we say there are 7,100, uh, I think actually 7,124 7, living languages. Okay. And if you drill down, you know, some of those languages maybe are going extinct or, or not being used anymore. So we usually use a round number of 7,000 languages. The Bible is complete in about 730 of those languages, the complete Bible. So you can see we're just over 10% there. And then if you take the wow. New Testament, you're going to have about 2,500 languages, and we're going to be, you know, about about uh, a third of the way there. But the challenge is, Alex, is that we naturally translate Scripture for the languages that have the largest number of speakers. Okay. And so what you find is that, you know, 23 languages reaches half the world, 100 languages reaches 90% of the world. We can actually reach 99% of the world with what we've already done, or, or maybe 98% of the world. But what happens to all those other languages that have never heard the gospel? You know, there's so many languages that have no scripture whatsoever. Oh, wow. um, many of them don't yeah. even have the Jesus film. And so we, we, we've been asking ourselves, even with our Bible. What do we do about that? You read a scripture, Matthew 24, and I also know in Revelation 7, I think verse 9, it says every single language has representation at Christ's second coming as Christ's followers, every single language. So is it our goal to reach 100% of the languages, or is it our goal to reach 90% of the people? Mm. And if it's to reach the people, we're doing an excellent job. If it's yeah. to reach the languages— we're really not. I mean, right. 45% of the languages are not even written in a dictionary. Well, so you have to do well, oral translations. Yeah, yeah. So, so talk to us about like um, sharing the gospel orally and visually. Because like you said, I mean, when a language is not written, I mean, when there are speakers but there's no, you know, uh, alphabet written down, wooden visual and audio be more effective than print anyway? Um, absolutely. So the generally accepted statistic is that 80% of the world learns orally. And we have taken that one step further, and we've said, yes, we agree with that statistic, but 99% of the world also learns visually. So unless you're sight impaired, you are also a visual learner. Well, I mean, we all are. And, and, and the windows, you know, our eyes are taking pictures of everything we see, and, and we remember what we see. So from the, very, from the very day you're born, you learn first visually, then you learn through hearing, and then as you're educated, you learn through reading. But we, in missions, we've kind of taken the opposite approach. We put all the emphasis into a printed literature, and then we go to audio, and then video is very, very uh, is very much left behind. So we like to say, what if? What if we inverted that? What if we said we should put most of our emphasis into video 
uh, presentation of God's Word, then audio, then print. So you still do all three. You just change. You just you just invert the current model, and that's how we reach these thousands of languages that don't have the gospel. We reach mm. them with visu- visual and audio content. Amen. If you're just tuning in, folks, Alex McFarland here. We're talking with Steve Cleary of Revelation Media. Uh, like few people I've met, has a passion to reach the world for Christ. So, um, Steve, uh, before we go too much further, uh, any websites where people can find out about your work? And then I want to I want to hear about this exciting rollout that's happening even as we speak. But where can people find you online? They can find us at our website, revelationmedia.com. Um, there, you can write to us. You can join our email list. We send out daily emails with great content, keeping people abreast of, of what we're doing and how God is working in our projects. And I am excited to share you know, a very, very new project. I will actually be announcing it first with you tonight publicly uh, for the first time in a project that I've been working on for seven years and extremely excited about. Sure, sure. Well, uh, this is exciting, and I want to say we feel quite privileged to hear about this. And uh, iBible. Now, what is iBible? So iBible is this project, is a new project, and it's a visual and interactive Bible. And so, you know, people say, well... Is it like a storybook? No, it is It is animated video, vibrant animated videos, taking the actual narrative of Scripture. Our goal is to go from Genesis to Revelation, covering the entire story of the Bible, and putting it in five- to seven-minute animated episodes online, can be viewed on a phone, is free to translate into any of these world's languages, and it's free to view and use for anybody. Mm. Uh, you know, I'm on the website right now. I, the letter I, as a, as in interactive, the letter I dot Bible, B-I-B-L-E, you know. Um, and uh, this is a great website, by the way. This is an incredibly well-done website. Um, may, may we talk about what's rolling out here on Easter weekend? Yes, yeah, so we have just uh, we've just completed 42 episodes of Genesis. It covers all of Genesis. Again, it's it's episodic. It's in chronological order, and it's broken up into 42 episodes. Some of them are even pre-release uh, versions of the animations because we just wanted to get them out. And we have just created an interactive app. And literally an hour before we spoke, Alex, uh, Apple. The, we were approved on the Apple Store, and our iBible app has gone live, uh, both for Apple and for Android. And so wow. we were going to announce the launch Easter Sunday, but we have just received approval, and we're sharing it now for the first time with the AFA audience. Uh, iBible is live for 42 episodes of Genesis. Praise God. Oh, praise God. So, uh, folks, I, I want you to go and, and download, and we'll talk about this. Alex McFarland here. Easter is coming. This is what makes Christianity different than any other belief system, that we have an empty tomb and a risen Savior who gives eternal life to whosoever will come. More with Steve Cleary, truly an innovator in world missions and the gospel. Stay tuned. We've got a brief break. We'll take calls, too. If you have questions, the number 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Stay t- Here's Pastor Joseph Parker. Not being alert, making unwise decisions, moving without a sense of urgency, any and all of these actions in wartime can literally cause someone to get killed. Psalm 91 is a unique weapon in Scripture that addresses many of the perils in life. Using this weapon daily helps us to be prepared for many of the attacks the devil may utilize consistently against us. Our encouragement to you is to pray Psalm 91 every single day over yourself and over your family because remember, 
in the dangerous, crazy world we live in, no one can protect you like the Lord can. Lord, anoint us afresh with the spirit of grace and mercy that would empower us to be warrior-minded believers. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Joseph is the author of the book, The Intercession Chronicles, a parable about prayer. It's available now at resources.afa.net. For your walk with Jesus, I'm David Wolin with Haven Today, inviting you to anchor your day in God's Word. What did Jesus do on the Wednesday of his last week before the cross? Scholars debate it, but nobody really knows. But we do know that Jesus was speaking that week about the end of the world. And what he says in Matthew 24, 14 is especially important. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And yes, there would be dark days, not only for Jesus that week, but throughout the lives of his disciples and all followers since. But Jesus has promised that his gospel will reach all nations, a promise continuing to be fulfilled to this day. Try out Anchor Devotional. Visit GetAnchor.com. If you're 65 or older, you know this. Seeing your health care costs go up and up is frustrating. And maybe you were just notified that your Medicare costs are increasing again, or you're just tired of the massive deductibles. Well, here's some good news. There's a program that can really help with this. It's MediShare 65 Plus. It's an affordable, reliable alternative. You can choose any Medicare provider. You get telehealth access anytime you need it. And MediShare 65 Plus is a low cost option for those with Medicare Parts A and B, and it fills in the gaps where Medicare stops. MediShare is a Christian healthcare community that aligns with your faith. People actually pray for you, they encourage you, and it's proven too. It's been going strong for over 30 years now. So call now. You can get one low monthly price for up to 10 years. You're not stuck with increasing costs. You can do something about this today. Call MediShare 65 Plus. Find out how much you can save. Call 833-45-BIBLE. That's 833-45-BIBLE. 833-45-BIBLE. Shining light into the darkness, this is the Hamilton Corner on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the Hamilton Corner. You know, part of my passion since I became a Christian in college at age 21 and then began to try to witness to my friends who had so many questions and comments, uh, I just knew that all my buddies at school needed the Lord too. And uh, some of my friends used to say, well, you know, the Bible is just some old book. And I remember I was a young believer and I was reading and I came across John 10, 35, where Jesus said this. Remember, the only man that ever walked on water and rose from the dead. Jesus said in John 10, 35, the scripture cannot be broken. Well, there it is. God's word was true. God's word is true. A millennia from now, God's word will still be true. Jesus said the scripture cannot be broken. The world needs to hear the word of God. Well, a man that uh, is committed to sharing this with the world, Steve Cleary of Revelation Media. And Steve, before the break, you were sharing about this exciting rollout, the book of Genesis, 42 episodes. And 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 folks, again, you know, I'm I'm just saying this because I'm so thrilled with what I'm seeing. I'm on the website now of i.bible, and it is such quality, and not not trying to flatter you or embellish here, Steve, but I, I'm just in awe of what you and your team are accomplishing, and I think God is going to use it in a mighty, mighty way. Well, we hope so, and this, this weekend is such an important date for us. We really feel we're at a crossroads, and because now we're taking a section of Scripture, we're taking the book of Genesis, uh, which consists of 42 iBible episodes, and we're releasing it free to the world. And we're going to see how people respond to it. You know, we, we created an interactive app. It has the episodes. It has quizzes. It has, um, it has discussion questions for parents. It has leaders' guides, memory verses, prayer. It is just jam-packed with resources, and this is our launch. This is it. This is what we've been working seven years towards, and now 
that we launched the first portion of it, now we got a team together. We're praying for the finances. We're praying for the right people to join us. And now we say, okay, if this works, you know, if people are going to engage in a visual Bible, then let's accelerate. Over the next seven years, let's complete the entire Bible all the way to Revelation, where you can literally watch the Bible. Yeah. And, and folks, look, everywhere I go, people are asking me, how do I get my child interested in Scripture? You know, what about young people? Folks, I can promise you, I was a youth pastor full-time for 11 years. For 20 years, I've been on the road speaking to youth. And uh, I'll tell you about our camps this summer for teenagers. But I can promise you, young people will will love this. I, I'm looking, okay, uh, episode one, the creation, part one, and then part two, and the fall, and then all the way up through uh, the death of Joseph, which is uh, episode 42. But Steve, you guys, when you go through the book of Genesis, I mean, there's some some pretty heavy stuff in here, like episode 30, Judah and Tamar. You didn't skirt around some of the hard parts of Scripture. It's it's all in here, isn't it? Uh, yes, and, and we want it to be true to the Scripture. And uh, Judah and Tamar, you know, it's 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 can be, it can feel like a like a hard story, but yeah. we would say, what is what what does God teach us through this? What does what does God teach Judah? You know, and what happens? And Tamar presented herself as a prostitute, as, as we know in the story, and Tamar is in the lineage of Christ. Yeah. So there's meaning, there's purpose, and it's not, it's not our role to explain it all. It's our role to present it, because, you know, children, children learn now by discovery. They don't want to just be told something. They want to talk about it. They want to discuss it. And that's why social media is just blowing up. And so mm-hmm. if we give a tool to a parent, if we give a tool to a Sunday school teacher, to a pastor, and then they can talk about it, I guarantee you, your kids will talk about these stories. I mean, my, right. son, is, my son is 30, and he may not be reading his Bible, but when he watches these episodes, he has questions. He has like, well, I don't understand. Why did that happen? How did that happen? You know, where is, where, where is God in this, in this storyline? And just to be able to dialogue with him about Scripture, I mean, it's a father's dream, right? Yeah, um, sure. That is family devotions. That's exactly what we want to be doing. Wow. And so we need and, to include the stories to accomplish that. Well, and, and I want to be clear, folks, if you go to i.bible, uh, these animations, these are Scripture. It's not like a paraphrase. I mean, you you are not only visually, but uh, verbally you're presenting God's Word, aren't you? Yes, our scripts are painstakingly written, reviewed by theologians, even uh, pastors and mission leaders, and then we submit them to SIL, and a lot of people don't know, SIL is a sister ministry to Wycliffe Bible Translators, and they are known as the experts of the experts when it comes to translation consultants, and we submit our scripts to them, and they have freely partnered with us to authenticate every single script as a as an an, an authentic translation of this uh, of the Bible narrative. So no one has ever actually, as as far as we know, no one's ever written the Bible in a narrative format. Uh, people have created Bible stories and such, but to actually stay true to Scripture, but put it all in chronological order and be narrative format, and that's what we've set out to do. And SIL, just just a, a month ago, gave us a letter saying that we approve these. These are authentic translations of the Bible narrative. I mean, we were we were blown away at what God, how how God prepared all this to be Amen. a new version of Scripture. Wow. Yeah. And uh, th- this is exciting. By the way, if you have a question for Steve or myself. Uh, the number is 888-589-8840. Um, and, you know, this is quite an accomplishment, brother. I notice um, also, uh, in addition to English, there's Hindi, there's Spanish, there's Swahili. I mean, th- this is—I I can't even fathom 
the details in such a monumental project, you, s certainly you've got a pretty good team all around you, Steve, I, I would bet, right? Uh, we do. We're about a team of 50 people, um, but I can tell you that they're all overworked. They've all huh. been working around the clock to make this app, this new phone app, uh, live. And we, we really try to be efficient with all the money that's donated. We're completely we're completely donor supported. We don't sell any of our iBible episodes. There are people have told us you need to do that. Businessmen have said, look, just sell them, charge a streaming service. And we said, no, we're not going to do that. This is the word of God. This is a vision God gave me to create a visual Bible. This is a tool that can help the Great Commission. And yeah, we're launching in, you know, obviously English, Spanish, Swahili, and Hindi. We're adding Farsi and Bulgarian uh, next month. And then we want to start working on Arabic and Portuguese, uh, maybe Ukrainian as well. Wow. And then we're setting up a network of church leaders. We're taking this to the church. We're going to pilot this in India. We're going to the church leaders, and we're saying there's 22 primary languages uh, in India. Those are the official languages. There's 400 of the minority languages. And we're going to say, look, can we work together to reach these all of these languages? And if they're willing to work with us to create a plan, and we work with the church, not against the church, we're not going to hire the church, we're not going to do it without them, a true partnership with the church in India to say, let's provide, you know, iBible to every, every people group in India. If we can prove this in a country the size of India, we can do this in every country in the world. Wow, this is really powerful. So let me challenge everybody now. Listen up. I know a lot of people listening right now. You're involved in church. Many of you maybe are leaders, some pastors. I'll be in a pulpit Sunday. I'll be doing a sunrise service Sunday. By the way, uh, on my own website, alexmcfarland.com, is my tour schedule. And uh, I'll be in central North Carolina Sunday, Easter Sunday. Angie will be there. And we'd uh, love to love to meet you, and uh, so if you go on my calendar there and see where I am, come on out. But here's what I was going to say, folks. Uh, let's give iBible a big rollout, especially to young people. And being Easter Sunday, there are going to be so many people in church that maybe this is one of the few times a year they come to church. Tell people about iBible. Now, Steve, yesterday when you and I were talking, you, you had a goal, you were praying for a certain number of downloads and stuff within the first 90 days. Talk about that, and AFR audience, let's let's help him reach this goal. What What's the, the, the goal you're shooting for on views or downloads, Steve? So the goal for signups for the app, and it's for iPhone or an Android phone, the goal is 100,000 signups in the first 90 days of starting starting this weekend. And mm -hmm. our goal is to have one million engagements in Scripture. So that could be watching an episode. That could be discussing an episode, reviewing one of our lessons. So praying for one million engagements and 100,000 new people um, to sign up to use the app. And Alex, I know I didn't say this last night. We're actually live now. So our official announcement comes this weekend. Okay. But we just got approval from Apple about an hour ago. And people can go to the App Store, the Apple App Store, search iBible by Revelation Media. You'll see it pop up, and you can access the app actually right now. We literally, it's been live for one hour. If you're see, on I'm so phone, privileged. Yeah, Steve, I got to tell you, uh, the fact that you're the first public rollout is here on the American Family Radio Network. I mean, what an honor. Because if, if there's one thing, and I know, folks, as a not only a show host, but part of the board, if there's one thing that is the, the conviction, the commitment, the heartbeat of AFR, it is fidelity to God's Word. And so, Steve, the fact that you're talking about this here and now, just an hour after going live on the App Store, glory to God. This, this is a great honor for us, my friend. Well, AFR has always been a great supporter of Revelation Media. Um, they were a partner, co-producers of Ryan DeFratis, 
They were an executive producer with us at the Pilgrim's Progress. They have been generous with their support of iBible. And so really it's an honor for me. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like American Family is uh, part of our own ministry family. And yeah. I've been working with them a long time and love the ministry. And so it's really, it's really fun for me. Uh, I didn't plan it. It just happened, right? That we yeah. got approval early. We're ready to go. And so we want um, AFA, AFR listeners to be the first to download the app, find us on the App Store, or go to iBible.app if you're on Android and download it, watch it, give us reviews, give us comments. You know, if we get really good reviews, then a- then Apple starts ranking us higher up in the App Store, and oh, okay. we just get more free advertising. We get more traction. So, yeah. you know, if if you have a problem with the app, please tell us. If you want to give us a good review, it'll just help us get the word out and help more people get a chance yeah. to watch the Bible for free. Yeah. Well, and and like I say, I'm on the the website now and. I mean, this is so incredibly well done. I mean, it's theologically sound. It is God's word, but the the uh, the animation. I mean, I don't have a better word than this, Steve. It's art. I mean, what what you've created here is a piece of art. So I, I'm just curious, like, where do you find people that know how to do this? I mean, all, all this animation and this incredible. Um, uh, aesthetically, it's a genuinely beautiful thing you've created here. Where, where did you find the, the people that could do this? Well, we actually started with some of the artists that worked on Pilgrim's Progress in uh, Costa Rica, and okay. we trained them in the new style. And then we opened up in Greece, in Athens, Greece, and hired artists there. A lot of them came out of the comic book in, uh, industry. And we really had to retrain them in the style, Um, and it took us a while. And even as we, you know, we released the 2D color episodes that you'll see on the app now, then we released pre-release black and white episodes uh, to release them faster. But they're really beautiful. To me, the black and whites are often more impactful than the color ones uh, because they're so artistic. And now we're working on 3D animation for the New Testament, so we're... We're stepping up again in the quality of our animation with new technology. And when I work on some of these scenes, we really have to train the artists to work in a specific style. And we, our goal is to create a very cinematic presentation. And my director said, he said, my goal is to make a painting, a beautiful painting, come to life. And that's really well, how amen. we see the Bible. Hey, forgive my ignorance, but like you said, 2D versus 3D. Uh, what does that mean? Two <laughs> uh, D animation is you would is kind of is is the same thing you're seeing now in the episodes. Um, okay. Kind of like you know Disney would have done, or it's it doesn't have as much depth, uh, mm-hmm. doesn't have as much movement. Three D animation. Some people confuse it for putting three D glasses on, but three D animation um, is just generated from the computer. So you think of like Toy Story and Nemo, Finding Nemo. Those are those are three D animations. Okay. And so we are moving. Uh, Pilgrim's Progress was three D animation, but in the past, three D animation was about three times as expensive as two D. But new technologies have allowed us to do rapid development, and we can. We're training now young people, from interns to university students. We're training them to do the animation. We're mm. training them in our style. And hey, now forgive me, forgive to... me. Hold, hold that thought. We've got a break coming up, folks. This is the Hamilton Corner. Alex McFarland sitting in for Abe Hamilton with our guest, Steve Cleary of Revelation Media. This exciting rollout of God's Word animated. Stay tuned. Hey, man, what are you doing? I'm just lying here, relaxing in a stream. I call it streaming. Okay, uh, you know that word already has another meaning, right? AFA Streaming offers free and subscription video content. Titles like By Design, The God Who Speaks, and Asbury Revival Desperate for More. You'll also find video versions of AFR programs. Visit afa.net and click on Streaming.
Fostering and adoption is not a band-aid for nope. infertility. Nope, like it, it is a calling and God can change the desire of your heart and make that so rewarding. It's the most yeah. beautiful, selfless thing. It's pure religion, but it's not a fix to I desire biological child. I God has to deal with that in your heart separately. Hannah's Heart, encouraging couples through infertility and miscarriage. Saturdays, 4 a.m. Central on AFR or on the AFR app. Neo-Pagan America. This is David Wheaton, host of The Christian Worldview. The United States was once known for Christian values, but today has become neo-pagan, evidenced by institutional rejection of God and His Word. There are three general responses to this. Christian faithfulness focuses on personal sanctification, family discipleship, and the local church, along with some civil engagement. Christian activism aims for spiritual and cultural change, including local church advocacy and politics. Christian Dominion sees a mandate that society be reclaimed to reflect overtly Christian laws and leaders. Listen to our most recent program about this at thechristianworldview.org, but one thing's for certain, Christ will return to take dominion, and He will rule them with a rod of iron. Tune in this weekend for a special Easter program. Listen to The Christian Worldview with David Wheaton, Saturday mornings at 8 Central on American Family Radio. This is Walker Wildman with AFR, and we're sending Bibles. Here's Michael with Bible League International. Walker, here's an incredible story of how the gospel is truly changing hearts on the island nation of Madagascar, Africa. Let me tell you about Lally the Village Witch Doctor. She was all about voodoo, black magic, sorcery, all that spiritual darkness, right? But that would all change when a Christian invited her to come learn about Jesus. Lally would accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, but the story does not end there. She would go to literally dozens of families that she misled through witchcraft and urge them to follow Jesus. Today, there's 400 people in remote Madagascar, Africa, who need the Word of God. Listen, every gift made today will be doubled. We have a goal this month to bless 4,000 Bibleist believers. We're a little bit behind, and so would you help us today? $5 sends one Bible. Yes, that's $5 for one Bible. $100 sends 20, and 500 sends 100 Bibles. Give generously at 800 Yes Word, 800 Yes Word, or visit sendbiblesnow.org. Send Bibles Now. If you're hearing this, you know about AFR, but do you know about the AFR app? With the AFR app, you can hear AFR anytime, anywhere. And now to make it even easier, we've gathered all the sources for our app together in one place at AFR.net slash apps. There you'll find links to Google Play and the Apple and Amazon app stores. Again, that's AFR.net slash apps to download the AFR app. So now you know. The Hamilton Quarter Podcast and One Minute Commentaries are available at AFR.net. Back to the Hamilton Quarter on American Family Radio. Welcome back to the program. Alex McFarland here. Hey, how important is the, the Word of God? I'm going to return to my conversation with Steve Cleary of Revelation Media, but I'm going to recite a poem written by Martin Luther. And uh, I came across this 30 years ago. I thought it was so powerful. You know, the great reformer Martin Luther, who kind of rediscovered the gospel of grace through reading Habakkuk in the Old Testament and the book of Romans. But Luther wrote this. He said, feelings come and feelings go. Feelings are deceiving. My warrant is the word of God, not else is worth believing. Though all my heart should feel condemned for lack of some sweet token, there is one greater than my heart. His word cannot be broken. I'll trust in God's unchanging word till soul and body sever. For though all things might pass away, God's word will stand forever. And indeed, it does. That's why we're so passionate. And getting the Bible to the world, that would or should thrill the heart of any Christian. Steve Cleary and his team are doing it with iBible, and the website is i, the letter i, dot Bible, B-I-B-L-E. I want to encourage all of you folks, listen, Easter Sunday, uh, people are going to be in church, especially a lot of young people. So go to the website, i.bible, check it out, you'll be blown away like I am, and then over the Easter weekend, what a great way to honor our risen Savior by telling everybody that you can about this great resource 
that the the Bible uh, animated. And so, Steve, brother, I, I thank God for you. I really do. Now, before the break, I jumped jumped in and took us out there, but you were talking about your team and putting this together, get it, getting it animated. I wanted to give you time to finish your thought if, if you want to. Excited about um, the, new, the, the, the new technologies and animation. And yeah. we're also excited about we started an internship program and a college university program. And so we're able to work with young people. You combine that with their passion for the gospel. And then we're able to have these new software programs that are coming out. Uh, some of them have some AI features in them. And we're able to bring the animation to a new level. So as we start releasing new episodes beyond Genesis, right now we're working on the life of Christ. You're going to see okay. even more beautiful artwork, and it's just going to come to life. As we like to say, it's a painting that comes to life. Because the artwork, you know, God gave us this creativity. And I want to do the best job I can you know, in an affordable way. We don't have Hollywood budgets, but we take the resources we have and try to try to create the most beautiful artwork we can in honoring God's Word. Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, did you, um, as Genesis was getting completed, did you beta test it on any audiences? And if so, what were, what were their ages? What were their reactions? We we did do some beta testing, and but the funniest thing is that my distributor put the first six episodes or first nine episodes on YouTube, and I didn't even know he did that. Um, and they were episodes that I wanted to improve, I wanted to make better. And he called me up and he said, "Steve, we need we need to get more episodes now." And I said, "And I said, but we're redoing the ones we have." And he goes, "No, we need new episodes." He says, "Are you seeing what's going on on YouTube?" And I'm like, no, I didn't even know the episodes were on YouTube. And I went and looked, <laughs> and I saw millions of views. I think we just wow. crossed 18 million views, and that was just the pilot. And that is only that was only in English. And so we did, you know, I didn't even know we were going to do this, but we did pilot it. We did proof of concept. But a gentleman came to me when he heard those figures, and he was from uh, executive in one of the Bible societies. And he goes, you know, he said, he said, views don't matter. He says, they can be 20 seconds. He goes, I want to know how many minutes people watch the episodes. And it was a fair question, and I was a little scared to answer it. But we went back, and we did the research, and we found that the average person was watching the episodes for five minutes, and that was over 100 million minutes of watch time. And then we looked at the numbers again nine months later before we released the app, and people are watching the episodes now for six minutes Remember, the episodes are only seven minutes long. Wow. And so we are getting like an 80% view of the episodes. Um, we are getting a view every 11 seconds around the clock. And that was before we released the app. That was only with a handful of episodes. Now with 42 episodes being released, we really believe it's going to start accelerating with Hindi with uh, Swahili, with Spanish. We didn't have all those uh, released yet. Those are just releasing this weekend. Um, wow. I, wow. I, I really believe people will engage with these, not yeah. because I did something special, but because it's the Word of God and it's visual. And that's where, that's where the next generation is consuming all their content. They will spend, you know, our kids and grandkids will spend more time on their phone than they will in school. Hmm. It's it's just it's just crazy, and it and it is not going away. It's, you know, we're not going to reverse it. So we need we need to reach them in the way they engage in content today, and that is true around yeah. the world. Yeah, um, I'm going to read a sentence on your website. Uh, there there's some kind of extra, you know, like uh, director's cut kind of things, and there's one video about how the artists depict the the passage of time and sun up, sun down, that kind of thing, but it says this, now listen, quote, the techniques in iBible episodes are intended to help the reader, watcher, and listener fully grasp the Word of God. And that, that's really true, and it goes on, it says, please pray for this project, please prayerfully consider a donation to help support the production of iBible, and continue to pray as we work toward this God-sized goal of producing the world's first ever visual and interactive presentation of the whole divine narrative. And so uh, I would encourage people to pray 
and promote this as well and and consider supporting so so let me ask you this um what what would you like to see churches do and churches and christians how how can we help you steve the best way so let's so let's start with churches uh we we have talked to a lot of youth youth leaders and pastors um even in different countries and we are providing free curriculum so our curriculum on the iBible app, <clears throat> we, we have Sunday school lessons. We have the videos to go with them. And so if you think about it, the first 42 episodes already are 42 weeks of, of Sunday school material. We want churches to use it, and then we want them to give us feedback. We want them to say, here's, here's what was the most useful. Here's what helped the most. Here's what you can do better in the future. And so the biggest, the biggest honor for us is when a church uses iBible and the content we've written, because our staff has put so much emphasis into this, and the donors that have donated, I know that is the reward. If we can be teaching the Bible in an engaging manner uh, in Sunday school, I mean, let's, I mean, let's face it, church attendance is down. Sunday school yeah. is even down further among kids. Family devotions are completely down. So for churches— Try using it and then give us feedback. For for parents, we challenge them: sit down with sit, sit, sit down with your children. We say age eight plus. Uh, some some I know do it with you know five, six, seven year olds, but we say eight plus because of the content. Watch an episode, then go hit discuss, and we'll start and and read the questions we ask and start talking about the Bible. And I just know, we hear it every single time somebody does this. They said, my kid's talking about the Bible more than they ever have. And, and, wow. and they're engaging in Scripture. And then, of course, for youth, we want them to use the app. Uh, we, know, we know they watch hours a day of video, and we want them to take the quizzes, use the app, and just start learning God's Word, because we present it in a very understandable way, uh, but still being true to Scripture. And so the app is live in the Apple App Store. You can find iBible there, and you can find us on iBible.app. Uh, I'm embarrassed to say, Alex, we haven't even updated our website to put the app logos on there because they literally went live an hour ago, an hour and a half ago. And so we're just sharing it. My staff wasn't going to share anything until this weekend, but when you invited me on the program, I wanted the AFA audience to be the first ones to have access to the app and to give us great feedback. Wow. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. It truly is. And uh, let me ask you this. Um, In getting on the digital platforms and the app stores, are you going to have to, how are you going to navigate the the parts of Scripture that aren't politically correct these days? I mean, there's, there's plenty, plenty in the Word of God that is absolute truth, but uh, you know, a fallen world is going to push back on it. I suspect. Um, what do you What do you think about all this? Uh, we know that opposition is coming, and I will make a promise that we will not be woke. We will not bend to, you know, political or social pressure to not be true to the Word of God. And we know yeah. we're going to be hitting subject matters. And honestly, we're going to approach it the same way we had to approach the hard stories of Scripture. We're just going to approach it with prayer. And we're going to pray, God, how would you have us do this? How would you have us present this? How can we be, you know, honor God's Word? We will not compromise and make sure we get the Word of God out, knowing that we've we've already been boycotted by Facebook. Uh, AFA knows what it's like to be boycotted, and we do as well. Uh, Not not as much as uh, AFA. But we're not looking for trouble, but we know it's coming. But you know what's interesting? That, if I can say this, it's actually kind of funny. We do a lot overseas on Facebook that we can't do in the U.S. And so there's really social pressure in the U.S. that doesn't exist in other countries. They just want my money. And if if I pay to advertise, they just take my money. And they don't – I mean, in America, I get my ads canceled all the time. In Africa – I never get my ads canceled. And so it isn't even really a real conviction. If these people really had conviction, it would be universal. It is, it is social pressure here in America claiming this is what we need to do, and they don't even, they don't even police their own convictions overseas. Yeah. You know what? Um, Bert Harper and I wrote—well, we've written two books from Exploring the Word. 
that are uh, 100 Bible questions from actual listeners to Exploring the Word, and then we did a follow-up book, 100 Bible Questions and Answers for Families. And about uh, three and a half, four years ago, when our first book came out, you know, we were taking the actual questions from actual radio listeners, so we figured, you know, this would be where people are spiritually and emotionally. Anyway, there were two questions, and, and both of them dealt with sexual issues. Um, and yes, we came down on the side of where the Bible is. Anyway, uh, we were about to go to press, and we got a call that a major American retailer uh, said, look, remove these two questions and we'll buy, I forget, it, but it, it was thousands and thousands of copies of the book. And we didn't write it for money, but in terms of royalties, uh, instantly it would have put $5,000 in my pocket and $5,000 in Bert Harper's pocket. And they said, look, come on, it's just two questions. And of course, you know, we said no, you know. We, God allowed us to be on the radio. God allowed us to write a book. Um, and, you know, this one particular American retail chain said, you know, leave out what God's Word says about gender and sexuality, and we'll buy thousands and thousands of copies of your book. And we said, um, can't do that. You know, and so I applaud you, and I, I know what it is. You know, we have to stay true to God's word because one day we'll face the Lord. And, you know, First John 2 28 says we we want to meet God unashamed. So, brother, I, I applaud your commitment to be true to what God's word says. Well, you know, we have to. And like you said, it is a witness to the world. Um, I've worked a lot with Voice of the Martyrs and I've worked um, in persecuted oh, yeah. countries. And I remember this event in China where the Chinese government told ministries, big U.S. ministries, to not put talk about China and persecution, and even and, and even yelled at a friend of mine in China saying, they showed a magazine, I think it was from Voice of the Martyrs, and they said, they said, how can you support this? They yelled at him, and they said, you do this, and we'll even, you know, we'll help promote your products. And, you know, almost every ministry agreed to do it, and they took out... I, I can remember an article in an ad I had taken out of a Christian magazine because it said Chinese persecute Christians. And then I later heard that the Chinese leaders lost full respect for the American ministries because they didn't stand behind their word. They easily compromised their word in exchange to get more publicity. Wow. And I mean, what can we learn from that, right? It's like, mm. so you do not win when you compromise. Even no, you the don't. Very people. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they would have respected the ministries more if they would have put up a fight. Now, maybe sure. they wouldn't have allowed them to be have the public platform they did. And I asked some of these ministries, and I said, leaders, and I said, how can you do that? And they said, hey, well, it was Steve, the greater good. F uh, Steve, we're almost out of time. Brother, we applaud you. I look forward to visiting again. And let's do our part to spread the word about I.Bible. Folks, it's Easter coming up. Tell somebody about Jesus, and may God bless you.